Well, the results are in. The results of the 2010 Waterfowl Population and Breeding Habitat Survey are completed and have been reported by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Each year, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, cooperating states, Canadian Wildlife Service and tribes provide a survey, the most extensive in the world, of breeding populations and habitat conditions. Somewhere in the range of 2 million square miles of habitat are covered, over 55,000 linear miles of transects, and the result is a report of breeding populations and habitat conditions. Let's review that a little bit. With regard to breeding populations this year, total numbers of breeding ducks is essentially the same as a year ago and remains above the long-term average. This was also the case for mallards, for gadwalls, for green-winged teal, northern shovelers, and redheads. A couple of species for which we've had concern in recent years, scop and northern pintails, remain similar to last year but remain somewhat below the long-term average. The good news is they did not decline further. With regard to other species, blue-winged teal are really the only species that showed a significant decline from last year, declining from about 7.4 to 6.3 million, yet those numbers remain well above the long-term average. Good news for folks interested in those early migrants. Two species remain the same as last year and the same as the long-term average. Those are American widgeon and canvasbacks. On the habitat front, Habitat conditions this year were essentially the same as last year as well, with generally north central U.S. being fairly wet, especially in the eastern Dakotas, and areas in Canada being wet as well, especially during the surveys and as surveys continued. Precipitation was abundant. Habitat conditions only improved into the early summer. To the north of there, habitat conditions in the Northwest Territories, portions of Alaska, were really only about fair. Bottom line is, in total, numbers of ponds available for ducks on arrival this year in May was similar to last year and above the long-term average. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the flyways have quite a bit of work to do over the next month or so. Uh, they'll review this information about pond conditions, about populations of ducks, and establish the framework for the 2010 waterfowl season. States then, in follow-up during August and early September, will establish the opening dates and the nature of the seasons to occur within this fall period, late September through late January. A couple of other final points. Uh, one is that uh, waterfowl depend on waterfowl habitat, and it's really up to us over the long term through purchase of duck stamps, through support of organizations like Ducks Unlimited, through support of the North American Waterfowl Management Plan and the North American Wetlands Conservation Act to ensure that the numbers that we appreciate this year and the habitat conditions that support them are there over the longer term as well. Also, remember that waterfowl hunter numbers have declined somewhere in the range of about 40 percent over the last few decades. We have an opportunity, perhaps an obligation, to make sure that we reverse that trend. Consider the opportunity that experienced waterfowl hunters have over the next couple of months to invite others to learn waterfowling traditions, learn the techniques for waterfowl hunting, and then this fall consider inviting them on a waterfowl hunt. In this way, we can pass on the traditions of waterfowling and the strong tradition of supporting waterfowl conservation and waterfowl habitat conservation. Enjoy your season.